Namelab. Talking Science. Okay, you everybody know my uh, subject I will be talking about today. So, what is this stuff? Rock oil. Well, it basically is petroleum, which means we have oil and gas. And um, what we need for that to form are very specific things. But first, uh, let me start off with uh, the society's lifeline part. It's the most important resource our whole society is built upon. So, you all know it, you go to the gas station, you fill your tank of your car with gasoline that comes from oil, you know that. But, I want you to meet my lovely assistant, Barbie, and uh, just a fact, she's made of plastic. Plastic is also derived from oil. But imagine she would be real. Then she would have makeup, perfume, hair dye, and her clothing, and all of that would be, in, at least in parts, be derived or directly derived from oil. Okay, so where does that magic stuff come from? Well, for that we have to travel back in time, a long, long time ago, millions of years ago, and it will make splash, because all of you will land in one of three different environments that will contain water. So the first one would be lakes, the second one would be oceans, and the third one would be swamps. Now, in all of these environments we have organisms that uh, utilize photosynthesis to form or to convert sunlight into energy. And organic matter is not organic matter in every case, because in lakes we will have mostly uh, something that looks like this, it's just moss, but algae look like this. So you will have mostly algae in lakes. In oceans you will have microscopic organisms called phytoplankton. And in swamps, well, you have higher plants, and with that I mean this. Uh, believe me, it's not really, uh, it's very difficult to get a tree in here, but that's, that's what I mean by higher plants, so trees. Okay, so what do we need that from those organ organisms? Well, we need them to reproduce, and eventually we have to, unfortunately, let them die, and then accumulate and be preserved. So how does that happen? Well, let me get an example with phytoplankton. Imagine this confetti is phytoplankton. So, we have our first upper uh, layer of, of an ocean, and we have our phytoplankton, and it's producing, producing, and eventually it has to die sometime. And then it sinks to the bottom at the ocean, and there it will be consumed by bacteria, which uh, consume this stuff and also consume oxygen with that. So we create an anoxic environment deep down into the ocean or any water body that I just mentioned. And there we have our conditions to preserve the organic matter. Okay, so now we will have had our sauce rock. If you can't see, this is black stuff down here. And this sauce rock has to now be cooked. And what do I mean by cooked? Well. We have to increase the heat, and uh, for that we need to bury our sauce rock. And how does this burial happen? Well, we have nature for our help because she, keep, she just keeps shoveling other stuff on top of our sauce rock, and the sauce rock will then be buried deep into the earth where the heat is very high, and organic matter is ripped apart, put together into what we call kerogen. And this kerogen then, as it is buried even deeper, begins to crack. And here come our three environments. So the first one, lakes, will mostly produce oil, very heavy oil. Our oceans will produce oil and gas, and our swamps will eventually produce gas. And as the heat increases further and further, we have uh, only gas left that, is, that can be produced. And all of that stuff eventually leaves our sauce rock, migrates upward, because it is lighter than water, into a very porous rock, you can imagine a sponge, and there it can be produced and eventually made into Barbies. Thank you very much.